Bowman. Hi. How are you? I feel like we're living in a like in a weird zone today. I know. It's kind of like cloud cloudy out, and it's just cloudy like in my head too. But it's a holiday weekend. <laughs> Maybe that's it's why. It's the unofficial end of summer. Which, if you're watching, uh, I don't even know. Is our YouTube thing on? Because I can't see us on there. So that's not live. Um, I know, <laughs> but I'm talking about later. Peter's like, I know, but it's not live. <laughs> um, no, but what my point is that I'm very casual today. Oh, yeah, for the holiday weekend you know I'm like in the oh I'm just casual zone. because this is my normal no you're so super I'm cute rolling out of bed super cute super cute all right so we have a really hair. good show today we have a lot going on so we really need to um hop on it chop chop, chop so chop. how to catch a deadbeat dad yeah that's a we're gonna have somebody on um a mom who after 15 years uh her kids and she tracked him down and he I'm not gonna give away the story yeah but don't be yeah, yeah. very believe fascinating story and you know Disclaimer, like, neither one of us is dealing with anything like that, so um, nobody can sue us for libel or slander, so. Um. <laughs> I see air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, anyway, uh, read through what? the lines. Anyway, 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 so what's going on? <sighs> Nothing. I, um... I am finding myself feeling really frantic, mm. and I know that we talk a lot about, we're going to have someone in a couple of weeks um, uh, that's going to talk about decluttering our life, and I could really yes. use her right now, because my brain, I went to back to school night for my son, uh, uh, his first year in junior high last night, oh and I God. totally, for the 10 minute time that I was supposed to focus on what the teacher said, I probably retained about 32 seconds of what she was saying, because I was like somewhere else I was like swimming in my head I was mm. totally focused on a hundred other things that I need to be doing and I, I had to pinch myself so that I could get back to reality did because you actually I just, pinch yourself I did I was like <laughs> hitting my leg because I, I I have too much going on and I just I feel like I'm on overload and I'm just I just am trying I'm I'm looking forward to a weekend with no basketball for my kid um, I have my fantasy football draft on Monday and um, so I'm oh my goodness. preparing for that Kim's getting her dude on I know I'm getting my dude on um, so so it's funny that you say that because um, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up because this is how we roll this week. Um, the the whole thing of being crazy and like, do you feel like you're always trying to please everybody? Um, I am. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to just honor my my commitments. You know, I think that's part of it. It's not even okay. about pleasing everybody. Well, and it's we have like, to do that as a as a parent and well, and know. a professional and yeah. as a person and a friend and a woman and you know we both have things outside of our show here that yeah. take our time and busy, busy our life. attention. Um, so I don't. I'm a people pleaser by nature, but I think I'm learning how to how to adjust so that I'm actually just taking care of business. Right. Yeah. Business, huh? So yeah. um, heartsandtrueharmony.com, which, you know, no one's really ever heard of, but um, they did this whole, like, <laughs> what, you know, do you really love yourself? Like, there's a question, or signs that you really don't love yourself, that you don't really love yourself. Sorry. I am like, we are serious. Wait, <laughs> take two. Um, one of the things that is... Uh, sign that you don't love yourself is I'm not you one doesn't yeah. love him or herself is that you try to please everybody and you run around you run yourself ragged trying to be everything Why, because you're always looking for validation from others or just that you can't maybe you can't say no and put yourself first and like prioritize yourself well you, you know? know it's funny I think we've talked about this before um, you know being selfish I think people always attach like a negative connotation to that but I've really learned how to be more selfish and I say that because I want to make sure that I'm putting myself first to make sure that I'm giving me right a time to recoup and rejuvenate and repair and heal and before I give to others and so I think there it's an art to be able to put yourself first and not um, at the sacrifice of doing for others right well the other the other one is um, do you feel like you're never enough uh -huh. um, how do you feel so I feel like that? I'm never enough. I mean, is that like sometimes I have those moments that I feel like I just can't, I can't do it all. I'm not enough. It's not working. Things just aren't going my way. I think I get a little bit of that, but those are just self-loathing moments that don't really last that long. Because I am who I am, and I'm proud of the way I live my life, and I'm only capable of this person, right? You know, but not not feeling like feeling like you're not enough is. There's one thing that I can't do it all, but there's another if you're not. Do like I, I think I used to internalize it. Like if I didn't get everything done, it was a, a flaw. Mm -hmm. Like a, and now I'm just 
I feel like life has gotten more and more unreasonable and expectations of people have gotten unreasonable. We always go back and forth with technology and someone texts you and or Facebook messages you and if you don't respond like right. within two minutes yeah. you know whatever I remember when you used to call and it would right. ring and ring and ring and if they weren't there right. you'd call again right <laughs> you know right. or, or mail. like your friend's not home and right. you know she'll call you when she gets back like oh my god I remember going up to the door and saying hi is Molly home can she play no sorry she's not home from school yet and I would walk away with my head down like so <laughs> disappointed and hurt <laughs> I and I go back an hour later is she here yet yeah yeah it's crazy so um Later in the show, okay. we're going to talk to um, Cheryl uh, about her experience with her ex. But also, um, Nancy, later later in the show. Look later, at me. later. I'm just later, so later. on the ball today. No, you're thinking uh, before you speak. That's I am good, thinking before yeah. I speak, which is new. Um, <laughs> she is going to be on. She's a, a career management. She's in career management and transition coach coaching, mm-hmm. which is fancy yeah and but but in actuality <laughs> i want to so see your business card yeah right yeah that's a long business that's card a- so um we're going to find out how you can move toward the career you really are meant for um like us in radio yes <laughs> this is quite a move for us yes yeah it, mm-hmm. it really is so um what do you got what else you know, I think um, I'm such in holiday. I'm sorry, I'm in long weekend mode already. What is anyone else in long week? Well, look, at people are running by the window, just like, like, what doing craziness. aerobics outside the window. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I am feeling, um, I'm feeling a little bit like uh, a little carryover, a little hangover from our conversation with the uh, uh, millionaire matchmaker. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, if you didn't catch that, go to broadcast.com right now. Well, actually, not right now because you're listening to this after the show, and um, listen to that interview because I loved it. Yeah, but I I I, I was challenged to um, try to. Uh, put myself out there and and one of the things that she had said um, was that you need to treat dating like a referral system like a referral process when you're out with other people and right. you always like tell people that you're single and I really find that I'm having a difficult time with that to so, t- telling people yeah I just I just feels funny but I, I challenged myself this weekend I did it <gasps> twice I did. You did I did I did what it did twice what did you tell well I'm not going to tell that well you told like friends that you're looking I just I made I made comments um, it was very funny someone posted something on Facebook that they were looking for a 6-1 uh, handsome athletic model for an ad and I'm like and is he single and available and then someone wrote back he's my 19 year old son I'm like whoopsie doodles oh. <laughs> so that didn't work out so well for me in that realm but um, no I'm trying I'm trying because I, I'm, I'm really trying to take baby steps to, to move some things out of my way in my own life I love that you took the advice you know and if, if you took the advice from last week's Millionaire Matchmaker show you definitely have to reach out to us too on Facebook Twitter uh, or call 661-298-5487 and let us know but um you know do you feel like her her advice was helpful um I I feel like it was it was a challenge and I think uh you know it's forcing me I think to exercise muscles that I'm not comfortable exercising like the suggestion to go somewhere alone um (laughs) you don't like to go places alone Uh, not not unless I have to I mean I had to go to back to school night alone because I'm my own parent here Mm -hmm. um but in life no i'm not tend i don't tend to people usually bring dates to back to school night they usually bring their spouse um (laughs) or you know uh no i just uh no i don't i don't like to i don't have a problem with i love when i see other people sitting you know alone and challenge you know like championing themselves to go eat by themselves or go get a drink by them i just would never i'm just not that girl I get too I get too uncomfortable and nervous and and then I focus on my phone and I look, then I look just like that person who all they're doing is focusing on their phone. Right. I just I'm I'm very insecure despite certain characteristic. Which would you rather though, being at back to school night all by yourself or being there with an ex across the room like that happened last <laughs> night. I was so you fun. Always yeah. see those couples. I had a former couple. A friend of my son, um, I know them for a long time and I, I I didn't connect it. I saw that I saw the dad walk by earlier, and then I saw the mom. Uh, she and I are friends, and she came in, and she was so uncomfortable sitting in class with me. We were I was trying to crack jokes and like be the class clown, and then she gets up. She's like, "Awkward, my ex husband and his new date or new wife are ready behind me," and she's like, "We have to follow each other all night doing this process." And oh. 
Yeah, so I'm thankful for those moments. New date or new it. wife? I don't those know. are two totally. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he, people bring a date to those things. Well, you never know. He wants to show that he's a good dad. Um, yeah. But no, I, I actually think it's a g- girlfriend. But um, yeah, but no, I'm grateful. I didn't. I didn't have to deal with that. And yeah. everybody knows me that I'm just Sam's mom. So. Right. Yeah. Isn't that funny how we're like relegated to the name of the child's parent? Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, I don't know. You know. There you go. <laughs> That's what I have. So. Um, but you, you know, it was it was a it's a it was a fun experience. I'm going back to back to school night. Um, mm-hmm. One of his teachers, uh, he's the history teacher, and he is a cute single. Uh, no. No, not okay. cute. I mean, he's cute. I, no, come on now. Um, I don't want to be thinking about my son's teacher that way. Uh, but See, he loved, mind. loves history. And it was like, oozing from him and I was getting so excited that like now I want to like go read along with my son because he just loves his his lesson so much really? his lessons plan yeah he had like gladiator music going on when we walked in and there was stuff I mean I, he just loves teaching and all of, I got that impression from all of his teachers and that's such a great such a great feeling I left there and I came home my son's like who'd you like who's the best what classroom did you like tell me everything don't miss a beat I'm like who are you wow so yeah he's super excited and um it just goes to show and I know you posted something recently about how teachers make a difference and oh, how thankful you are for that so I, I just so it was thankful. a nice reminder awesome yeah. hey so um on a totally separate note did you hear about the three dr- <laughs> three drunk women walk on the bus school bus <laughs> <laughs> there's a joke there three drunk women walk into a school bus yeah um Speaking there's actually school. no punchline because uh, it happened. Happened. happened in San Antonio. Yeah, so how? So, how, so these women, I, I, I remember looking at that briefly. Um, so there was a school bus. We don't have school buses that much. They have no here. connection to the school. They just wandered they onto the bus. onto a bus full of kids. Um, the driver didn't notice. And they sat they down and walking. started talking to the kids, right? Um, yeah, it wasn't until the third woman, the one who sat by the middle by a middle schooler, tried to exit that the bus driver realized something was up and asked for her ID. <laughs> They're banned from the school's campus. One woman faces an assault charge after grabbing a student's arm, and another was cited for having alcohol on school property. Wait, was this in the morning pickup or the That's afternoon drop-off? That's what I'm trying off? to figure out. I'm trying to figure out. How do, you, how do three grown women drunk, because I've seen you and I in that situation. <laughs> I've never, never, I've never been. Um, get onto a school bus. Because... After a couple drinks, everything seems like a great idea. <laughs> oh, I've done my share. There's no doubt. But I just mean, how does the school bus driver right. not notice th- three women who I'm going to wage a bet are bigger than the middle school kids? How do they stealth like? I'm not a stealth drunk. Yeah. Are you? Are you? I know you're not, actually. <laughs> I've had experiences. <laughs> I think I am. That's no. the thing. That's the best part. It's like, I think I'm being all yeah. like, I'm so sly. Yeah. No. You know, and then it's like, knock, knock, knock things over. And yeah. yeah. I have another um, friend are, like You that. have a certain... Uh, you you look like you're thinking back to a certain I do. memory. It was a weekend in Hollywood. My 40th birthday. Oh, what? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Did we lose you for a while? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, didn't I go for a... I went for a walk you at went night for a, to uh, You went food. for an urban hike. Mm. Yeah, I went... Well, it was... It was... Um, it was my birthday and it was you know midnight but it, it's a Hollywood Boulevard like so many people are out uh-huh. the lights are it's like walking in Times Square like how could you get hurt um yeah so that, yeah of course if that were one of my kids or something of I would of course well one of us you would have been mad but yeah so these three women get on the bus and I just I'm, I'm, I'm a little perplexed by how the bus driver didn't notice I, I mean what was he doing what's the craziest she? thing you've ever done after and we I hijacked a limo <gasps> what my friend Michelle and I uh, we did the, we did the exact same thing in San Francisco we had a couple too many cocktails and we got ourselves into a limo and we told the driver we wanted to go and he started driving and then like 20 minutes later he's like wait you're not my people I'm like what <gasps> no. and he's like you need to get out and we grabbed a bottle of champagne and off we went and he <laughs> left us in the middle of the street in so San Francisco his people like probably didn't had no idea where he was no and-, and then we thought we were so good that we thought we would try it again and so we stumbled onto literally stumbled onto another uh it was either an SUV limo or like another limo I can't remember um, and we opened the door and they're like not this time and they slammed the door on us and yeah it was pretty oh. funny we, we thought you know fool me once what is that phrase <laughs> fool me once shame, shame on, on you. you fool me twice shame, shame on me yeah anyway yeah. we ended up with a nice bottle of champagne on it so off of that but yeah we did that what's oh the craziest gosh. thing you've done I don't know probably gone for that food 
Oh, oh come so on now. Our guest is on hold. Peter, you're not even telling us. What? I signed it. You signed it? You signed it? it? Oh, Peter, we're, we don't talk. Don't talk can we about take it. our caller? We can't take our caller. <laughs> <Peter>. <laughs> don't worry about it. Peter's yeah. having some trouble. Um, she can hear us talking. She says she's, she says she's on hold. Really? Um, can maybe she can hang up and call back um, so Peter can answer? Oh, see, you're having a cloudy Friday too. Something's Peter's in our, the air. What? He's our hello. Hello. Yeah. Oh, how about some uh, headphones? Is she here? Wait, okay. this is such a funky did you day. Hear? It's Wait, such hold a on. weird day. <laughs> We're not even plugged into our headphones. I've been playing with the, um, that's a whole other story too here. Wait. With the cord? Yeah. Sorry. People. So, um, I know if you're listening right now, like, I hope you're enjoy uh, starting your long weekend as this well. Is, this it sounds is the, like, actually, this is the craziest thing we did while drinking, but I promise you we're not actually drinking. <laughs> this is our show that we're doing to create bloopers, right? Yes, this is our blooper <laughs> show. <laughs> we just yes. don't take um, bloopers from other episodes. We just make them all in the same episode. Oh, you want me to have that one? Okay. Okay. Sorry. Oh, all my right. God. We're oh rookies. Oh, my goodness. I know. You'd think that this was our first episode. Tara, are you on the line? It's I'm Cheryl. Here. Oh, Cheryl, I'm Sorry. Not- I'm listening to all of you guys chit chat. Oh I'm glad you're not talking about me. <laughs> oh no! Oh my goodness! <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. How are you? Okay, so <laughs> I'm just going to get right into it. Like you, I, I read your story and my jaw dropped. Literally, just <laughs> o- wide open. Probably a little drool. You oh. got a divorce many years ago. 15 years ago. 15 yeah. years ago. And mm-hmm. your ex was not paying child support. Like right away he didn't pay or just... Um, off and on, off and on, off and on. I mean, the only way he would usually pay is if he was called <clears throat> call into court. Mm-hmm. And usually he would show up. In the early years, he would show up and make a big chunk payment and then be on his way. And then we'd wait another three or four years for it to happen. But he totally went off the radar and disappeared, I would say, about six or seven years ago. So mm-hmm. then it's been like a wild goose chase. We, you know, got him once and then disappeared again for the past few years. So it's been very difficult to track him down in a state that's not that big. So recently, <laughs> though, your kids are like super sleuth, like, like <laughs> and, and so what, ha- what happened? What did they do? Um, they started helping me because they said, you know, college is coming. Um, it would be really nice if we could get the dad fund, even if he doesn't want to, you know, help help us out and be around um Mm -hmm. dogs barking sorry about that um so they started kind of researching online and wanted to do it all for free um looking up business records and and whatnot uh finding businesses that are owned by his family and Mm -hmm. and him too so kind of came across stuff found out where he was in the general vicinity and we just started going down there and taking a look and the first time was a total fail uh, he took off oh. and, so he saw you guys uh, and took off like, and saw, this is a guy he, who it's not he can afford it it, it sounds oh, like oh most definitely yes uh, many vacation re- that's another reason we found him he does a lot of trip advisor reviews of all the fab vacations oh. he takes so, oh. yeah. and you never just use your real name and email okay <laughs> just don't do that if you're hiding right and uh, um, so he, uh, he he made eye contact and slipped out, and the police at that time said, okay, well, he took off, so there's not much we can do. Mm-hmm. And we can, and it's just a bench warrant, so we can't do anything after 5 o'clock, so don't wait around. So we figured, let's give him, he's a creature habit, let's give him about a, three weeks, four weeks to settle back into his routine. And we took um, my older son, who's 17, his friend with us, so she was our undercover, and she went into his store and pretended to shop and asked if he was there. Well, he doesn't. He loves to own things, but he doesn't really like to work, so we figured he was probably hanging out back. And they said, well, she said, can I use the bathroom? Oh, and the boss is in the bathroom. She said, mm-hmm. okay, bingo. So she texts us, and we're like, okay, boss is in the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. There. Call the police. The police come, and they gave us a really hard time. Can you identify him? Do you know what he's wearing? They went through the whole thing. We can't really help you if he's not in there. I said, he's in there. He also has a nice loft apartment that's above the business overlooking Newport. It's a beautiful spot. Mm-hmm. So he went, they went in and they looked around. They said, he's not here. I said, I guarantee you he is in this building somewhere. And they said, well, it's not our problem. If you spot him, call us back. My kids are running up and down stairs, looking around. And all of a sudden my son spots him walking out the back. Wow. And, we, and he's walking 
so they run to the back to get him and the cops are walking and they're like are you sure it's him can you identify his clothing again went through the whole thing took their time my son had him he got him halfway through a parking lot and confronted him wow with a hi dad oh geez oh my gosh <laughs> such a good kid <laughs> hi dad <laughs> you know, I'm what's up now, I'm yeah like hey I did thought, you want to get ice cream <laughs> i know i thought i was on csi honest to god my heart was racing i can't like even i've had knee surgery so i'm like trying to run look like an idiot and we're just like we're all spread out all over the place on our phones like talking to each other like we're everybody's safe because we didn't know I mean right I, I didn't know his reaction I and, know he'd want to bolt and you were saying and, there was already a warrant so uh, where you live is um you know when 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 a guy doesn't pay tra- child or a person doesn't pay child support right you can when it comes get over them a certain amount you can get they'll issue a warrant for them it's called a bench warrant if they don't show up for their court date mm-hmm. and now a bench warrant can't be served at night or in some certain i guess certain states it can be there's all kinds of rules right. they're not just going to go p- pick him up if he got stopped on the traffic stop they would know he had a warrant in the system they would pull him in it's very they do not go out looking for people that owe child support right and they just kind of catch him he was happening. the top guy in the state. It's been going on for years. They didn't look for him actively. They didn't even seem to care, quite honestly. Right. It well, was just like, you know, they just didn't care. Right. Well, we got to gotta take a quick break, but can you stay okay. with us? We, we want, of I'm course, here. we want to hear the rest. <laughs> we'll be right back on broadcast. Yeah. 